Hi. Now, in this video, what I want to show you is that if we have a line that intersects a plane, how we go about finding the equation of the reflected line in that plane. So to illustrate this, what I've got here is an example where I've got a line L1 and a plane pi. And what I'm going to show you is how we get the equation of the reflection of L1 in the plane pi. But before we do this, it's important that I run through the method. It's quite involved. So let's suppose we take a plane and a line intersecting the plane. The plane we'll call in general pi then and it has this general Cartesian form which you should already be familiar with. And the line L1 we're going to take as having this Cartesian equation. Again you should be familiar with this x1, y1, z1 represents a point on the line say this point here, and L, M and N are the direction ratios of a vector that is parallel to this line. So when it comes to reflecting this line in the plane pi, what we'll get is this. Now if we're to find this equation, then what we need are two points on this line. One of the points is clearly this point here, the point of intersection between the line and the plane pi. And let's suppose we call that x0, y0, z0. And there's another point that's going to be on this reflected line of L1. And that's going to be the image of x1, y1, z1. It's going to be down here. And I'll call it x2, y2, z2. And both these points will lie on a perpendicular to the plane. That perpendicular, drawn in here, and I've called it P. So these are the two points then that we're going to use to get the equation of the line. But we actually need to calculate them. This point of intersection is easily calculated by doing simultaneous equations between our line and the plane pi. And I'll show you how to do this as the first thing we do in the work solution. Now when it comes to working out this point here, x2, y2, z2, it takes a little bit more work. What we need to do is, first of all, work out what the equation of this perpendicular line is. And we can turn to the vector parametric form of the line. So I've said that the equation of the line P is represented as these general coordinates x, y, z as a vector. You might have that as a position vector R. And it equals a point on the line. Well, I've taken x1, y1, z1, this point here. And then we plus a scalar parameter, which I've called t, times a vector, which is parallel to the perpendicular line. And you'll see it's a, b, c, the coefficients of x, y, z in the plane. And again, you should be familiar with that result. And you can see that when t equals 0, we end up with x, y, z being equal to x1, y1, z1, our initial point. Now, all I need to do is find out the value of t where this perpendicular crosses the plane. Let's say it crosses the plane when t equals, say, big T. And that's easily done just by doing simultaneous equations between the equation of the perpendicular and the equation of the plane. Again, I'll show you how that's done in this example here in a few moments. And we solve that equation to give us a particular value of t, which I've called big T here in general. Now, when it comes to getting this point here, because these two distances are exactly the same, then the value of t 
at this point x2, y2, z2 must be t equaling 2t. So just double the value we've got here then, substitute it back into this equation here, and this will give us x2, y2, z2. And once we have x2, y2, z2, we now are in a position to get the equation of that reflected line, which is going to take on something of this form. Remember, any line has this Cartesian form here, and I've used it down here as taking my point on the line with coordinates x1, y1, z1, now as x0, y0, z0, or you could take x2, y2, z2, it's up to you, as those values across the top. And then for my direction ratios L, M and N, all I need to do is the difference between the two coordinates. x2 minus x0, y2 minus y0 and z2 minus z0 seen in the denominators here. And again you could do x0 minus x2, y0 minus y2, z0 minus z2, you'd still, at the end of the day, end up with an equivalent equation. So that's the method then that I'm going to be using in order to find the equation of the reflection of L1 in pi. So what I'll do now is just reduce this method to give me space then to work out the solution to this problem. So we have this equation then for L1, x plus 5 over 3 equals y minus 8 over 2 equals z minus 7 over minus 6. And the plane pi, x minus 2y minus z equals 2. So the first thing I want to do is find this point of intersection between the line L1 and the plane pi. And we do this by simultaneous equations. So if we label each equation 1 and 2, and you'll notice that I've introduced lambda here. Each of these parts here are exactly the same. They equal lambda, say. And so from 1, what I can do is make x, y, and z the subject in terms of lambda. So you can see from this one, x would equal 3 lambda minus 5. And you get similar results for y and z. Now, what I can do is substitute these values into equation 2 and solve for lambda. So, if you do that, then we see that for the point of intersection with the line with the plane, if I sub those values from equation 3 here into equation 2, you get this equation. And all I need to do then is expand the brackets, rearrange it, solve for lambda. I'll leave that up to you to check, but you'll find that lambda turns out to be 6. So, all I need to do is substitute lambda equals 6 back into equation 3 to give me the x, y, and z coordinates of this point of intersection. So, if we sub lambda equals 6, back into 3, you should find you get 13, 20, minus 29 as the x, y, z coordinates, respectively. Next, we need to find a point on the line L1. And that should be easy to see. We just take the values up here. Remember, you have to switch the signs, though, when you're looking at the form of the line. You've got the point negative 5, 8, and 7 lies on the line. Another way of looking at it is just to set lambda equal to 0 and you would find that you get x equals minus 5, y equals 8 and z equals 7 as a possible point then. So we now have then that minus 5, 8, 7 lies on L1. So we now go on to find the equation of the perpendicular to the plane and it's going to take on this form here. So what we have then, if we put it in vector parametric form, the position vector r of any point on that perpendicular, you can quote this as x, y, z, as I did down here, will be equal to a point on the perpendicular, 
which is minus 587, plus a scalar parameter, which I've called t, in the direction of that perpendicular. And remember that direction was the coefficients of the equation of the plane for x, y, and z. They turned out to be a, b, and c. So in our example, that's going to be 1 minus 2 minus 1. And you can see I've got that down here. So if we write r as x, y, z, and add these two vectors together, we end up with x, y, z equaling minus 5 plus t, 8 minus 2t, and 7 minus t. And I've called this equation 4. OK, so we'll just divide that side off. And we now need to find out where the perpendicular crosses the plane, giving us a value for t. And we do that then by substituting equation 4 here for x, y, and z into the equation of the plane given up here. And we should be able to solve for t then. So if you sub 4 into 2, what you get is this equation here. And if you expand the brackets, rearrange it for t, you should find that you get t equals 5. So remember then that this point is now reflected in the plane to give us this reflected point which I called x2, y2, z2. And that was given when we double the value of t that we found here. So that reflected point is going to be when I double t, in other words t equals 10, I'm going to substitute this into 4, and if you do that, you find you get x to be 5, y to be minus 12, and z to be minus 3. So that's our reflected point here. So we're now in a position to work out the direction of the reflected line by doing the difference between the coordinates 5 minus 12 minus 3 and the point of intersection between L1 and the plane pi, which we found out to be 13, 20, minus 29. And we can get that direction of the line L2 just by carrying out the subtraction between these two points here. So doing that, then we end up with 8, 32, minus 26. And you'll notice that each of these values is divisible by 2. So I could scale this down, and that direction ratio would be 2 lots of 4, 16, minus 13. So all I need to do is just use the 4, 16, minus 13 as that direction vector. So when it comes to finding that equation then of the reflected line L2, its Cartesian form then is just going to be this equation here. Remember that form is x minus x1, y minus y1 equals z minus z1, all over the direction vector. And you'll notice I'm using the point of intersection for my x1, y1, z1 points. Okay? You could, if you wanted to, just use 5 minus 12 minus 3 instead of this point here. At the end of the day, you'll have an equivalent line. Another form that you could write it in is the vector form, which would be the position vector r, or you could write x, y, z, equals a point on that reflected line. I've used the intersection point, or you could have used this point here, 5 minus 12 minus 3, and then I've just written k, a scalar parameter, times the direction vector, for 16 minus 13. Okay, so got two forms here. I'm sure you could come up with other equivalent forms. Okay, so that brings us now to the end of this video. Hope it's been of use to you. Don't forget though, do look in the description. You'll notice that I've got links to other questions that are based on this concept that you might like to try. And it'd be great if you decide to subscribe so you can keep up to date with any other videos that I upload. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you again in another video.